Fam, what's going on? Merch here for Eggbox TV. Back in the box. Welcome to the channel. If you're new, what's up? This is a store here in Toronto that specializes in, bang, these things. Beautiful saltwater aquariums. Small ones, big ones, and all the bulldogs in between. You want to say hi to all the region fam, Mr. Diggs? Hmm? What up? Check this out. Look at this dog bed. It's just chilling under here all day, every day. Okay, what are we going to talk about? If you want uh, an aquarium and you want it to be drilled and you want it to be exactly 28 gallons with a brand new stand, all new. Look at this. Overflow, come pick it up in the shop. $7.99. Canadian dollars. Just needs a sum. Okay, so over here in our what we call Fragoon. The Fragoon, Fragoon, Fragoon. Why do we call it Fragoon? Because it's shallow, like a lagoon, and we frag out of it. Just there's a lot of hard coral, so we call it the Fragoon. And just about everything that's in here is doing really well right now. But we had a little bit of a debacle, and I'd like to share with you guys when I make mistakes because I hope that you guys can learn from them. And so when I screw up, hopefully you don't have to screw up in the same way. So before I show you the not good, let me start with the good, and then we'll maybe transition to the not good. Stuff's looking fantastic. Look at the polyp extension on this one. I'm really happy with the color overall. Look at this. Ray, I see a colony that fell. Two of them. Mr. Ray Ray. Ray's camera shy, so what I like to do is put the camera, boom, oh, Ray! And then he walks away. Okay, just grab those two colonies after you are done shipping. Okay, so over here. We have three fallen soldiers. Why? What happened? They all bleached. Not, uh, yeah, they bleached, but they peeled. Their tissue literally peeled right off of them. And it is sort of my fault because we had a uh, swing in one of the variables that's very, very important for Acropora, which is alkalinity. But the way it happened was sort of in a strange way. So these types of corals really like stability. That's why they say hard corals, hard to keep. And when they say they, I say it's really just me. I don't think I've ever heard anyone else say that. But sticks are for chicks. No, they don't say that either. Sorry, I'm just coming up with stupid. I just want to show you one more before I tell you how I killed them. Look at this. Oh my god. Look at the color on this guy. I hope it's picking it up how nice and red it is. Maybe it's looking kind of brown on the camera. So let me take you into the basement to show you why and how that alkalinity swing happened. Also, if you've ever read or kept a tank, people always say, no, no natural sunlight. Check it out. I'm getting sunlight for 10 hours a day for the past six months. There's no nuisance algae. It's looking really good. I guess I understand the concept why you don't want direct sunlight, but if you think about it, these things are under direct sunlight in the ocean just say our coffee machine's ready i'll do a whole video on showing you guys how to use it come by starbucks what anytime you guys want you can press one of these buttons and it'll pop out espresso coffee cappuccino latte macchiato whatever you guys want enjoy one on us come to the basement and let me show you let me give you a little behind the scenes kind of tours because you guys don't get to see the basement too often and then I'll tell you uh, why and how that alkalinity swing happened. So we try to keep our alk here in the store at about 7.7. Calcium 450, magnesium, I keep it elevated, 1500. I haven't met anyone really that keeps it as high as I do. But uh, that's pretty much natural seawater. So the problem came from, man, there's a lot of boxes in here. So this actually our store doubles as our Reef Casa sort of packing area. We do have a warehouse four hours away where we're able to bring in a couple containers at a time, but we do have to process orders. So it is kind of busy here in the basement. I'm very happy that we have a basement. If you're ever looking to open a store like this, it's so nice to be able to work at this level. Um, we know our sumps are much higher and we have all the plumbing and electrical that comes here through the floor. And so now this is all done by yours truly. This is the third iteration of the frag box filter, and I'm really happy with it. There's not much I'm gonna change, except for the lighting, T5 is getting dated. So I'm gonna pull off this fixture first and set up our new Reef Casa. It's a very powerful LED light that's coming out. I think I'm gonna call it the Alpha. Very strong and very inexpensive. No app, no Wi-Fi, no Bluetooth, no fancy features, just lots of power, sheer power, little built-in timer. You can do sunrise, sunset, but just back to basics. I have so much headaches with a lot of the lights that are out there. That's not to say they're not good. It's just I'm old school, so I'm trying to make like a very powerful, old school, inexpensive LED light. <sighs> That's a mouthful. It's coming. So we use this for a lot of storage, retail stuff like our cups and our bags, and we go through plugs like crazy. This is our frag, um, what do you want to call it? Our frag station, frag bar, frag setup absolutely need these tools of the trade and this is where we do the dosing 
So we use a three-part dosing from ESV. I'll give you guys a little shout out. We've been using this for a long time. And that's our calcium, our alkalinity, our magnesium. And we're using Neptune to dose the alkalinity to replenish it as corals use it and consume it. So what happened, because I'm a dumbass, sorry, I mean a fart head. I don't know how to say that in another way. Um, the way I built these dosing containers, I just grabbed some, some quarter inch glass and I made like a little aquarium more or less, but it acts as a reservoir that holds um, the liquid that we're going to dose. So we have this tube here and the tube, I've kept it loose because we have to sort of pull these out in order to refill them nicely. And the tube on our alkalinity, I don't know, it's kind of blurry. I don't know if I can show you guys here. Basically, let me drop that to the bottom. The tube basically came out of the water. So instead of sitting here and pulling, it was sitting like up here. So our alkalinity dropped to about five before anyone noticed. We are supposed to come down here and check daily by doing this. If somebody wasn't doing their job, but there are a lot of parts in the store. Really, I take blame for just about everything that happens like this in the store, little freak accidents, because I built it. So if something like this happens, that is a design oversight. It's not the staff's fault. It's my fault for designing it in such a way. Right now, I'm actually seeing a lot of buildup here. Look, this is good that I'm making this video of splashing of alkalinity. So that's a good way to get your Neptune dose pump to stop working. So this is this one I just snapped off just so I could kind of show you guys a little bit more what I'm talking about. But see how inside it can slide easily so it can come out. Great. So we know it doesn't work. How am I fixing that? I'm basically just adding these little bulkheads into each one. See this? I'm drilling new holes into new acrylic. So I've already gone ahead and done this one on top. I can take this off. I just use some uh, silicone here. It's not the best hold when you do acrylic to glass. It does work, but it's not going to be leak proof. Never make a tank out of acrylic and glass or don't use silicone to hold pieces of acrylic together. It's just enough to hold it in place, but this won't hold if I need it to be leak proof. And then I have these little rods and what I've done is just fully connected um, this to the rod and I put it and push into the John Guest fitting. So there's really no chance anymore of it sliding out and it's just gonna pull uh, uh, very high production value here on the channel. I think you're getting the point though. It's just gonna pull from where I cut it always right there from the bottom. So I can't have really that same issue. So I'm learning over the, you know, the last 15, 16 years of keeping these things, I'm always learning a new and exciting ways how to mess up and kill coral. And then hopefully I don't have to do it again in that way. But I'm sure I'm going to find a new, exciting, and unforeseen way in order to mess up. And that's just kind of how the hobby goes. You just learn and you learn how not to do it and what to do over here in the basement. If you guys ever wondered what goes on in this tank, it's Acropora, SPS, tons of flow. I want lots of polyp extension, but I'm going to revamp this one. Like I said, I'm going to try out our new light. I I think I might keep some of the T5 just to do sort of a hybrid and I want to um, just redo the racks. Hello fishies, what's going on guys? I want to redo the racks. I want to uh, make the pumps a little more cohesive. I use Cichés actually down here. Ciché Voyager, I believe these are 2000s and I noticed right now a wave pump is going absolutely bonkers. This is good making videos like this because it forces me to like come down here and then you know, inspect stuff that's leaking, but it's leaking back in the tank, so it's not really, really an issue. I'm gonna go ahead and push this down while we're on camera. Sorry, ADHD, just fixing stuff as we go. It's part of the fun of owning a business. There's always something to do. It's never ending. I always wanted to do a video uh, showing you guys what's involved in this, but the video would never end because the job never ends. There's always something. It looks like I travel a lot, and I do around the world, but in between that time, I'm, I'm here many, many late nights grinding away. So yeah, this is gonna get completely overhauled. If you guys wanna see that, I can do videos on it. I don't know if it'll be that fun, but again, sea chase. Really like the sea chase. These waves have been crapping out on me one after another, but they are five years old. So for salt water, that's pretty, pretty good use. You know, you can't get really, I think that's good. Five years, I think is pretty good for any pump. And then the same thing over here in our farm system, um, relying on, oh, I got one of the waves that's kicking and then a lot of those again, Cicce. Italian company, S-I-C-C-E, but it's pronounced Sicce, not Sicci. Sicce, like Siciliano, like my familia, where they're from, from the small island, south of Italy. Okay, I think that's it, guys. You know, when I start speaking other accents, it's a good time to wrap it up. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you learned something, and hope to see you guys back here on the next episode of Frag Box TV. Bye for now.